Hello there everyone, this is Iron Mark 3 coming at you with a vehicle upload for the Steam Workshop. I thought it's been a while since I made a submarine, so... Hey, I made a submarine! Go me! <laughs> really this is kind of like a, a stylized hull upload sort of thing, so... It's not been fully kitted out, it's not got all the bells and whistles. It's got a f very oddly shaped hull compared to most submarines, I think. And that's why I find it interesting. It's why I enjoyed making it. And it's what I hope you guys will enjoy playing around with. I've just fitted out with a, a basic kind of loadout, so it's, um, it works, it can move around, but it's more the appearance than anything else that is distinctive about this particular craft, I think. And all you can see right now is a big block of metal basically floating in the water. But the waves are showing you a little bit more of what's on it, so let's drop underneath this. Yeah, as you can see, there's a bit more to it than you can see on the surface. And it's just up there right now because I've put it to rest and tried to make it so that um, I can get some good little pictures of what it is, really. <laughs> so as I said, distinctive shape it is. Let's just fish it out so you can get a proper look at it. Capsule mode. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I've called this thing the angle fish. I think you can see why. It is an incredibly heavily angled slope and two-dimensional and flat, basically. I've not really seen that many ships use this kind of style, so that's why I did it. It's all about the angles. It's using the wedge blocks at the front to give it those um, edges. And then I've weaved the shape back and forth to give it a more interesting appearance overall. <laughs> and that's what I've done with it. Single central hull, surrounded by two side hulls, which give it um, a bit more weight and a lower centre of gravity, as well as additional space to build and put stuff into. I've also fitted it out for, well, since it's so heavily angled towards the front, I've tried to deck it out a bit for speed, and this thing goes over 20 underwater, which I'll show you when I drop it back in. Because right now, it's the stylizing that more than anything else that I'm trying to show off. Also, as you can see, plenty of propellers at the back, so plenty of forward power. Side turning mostly comes from these banks of propellers at the front and back. There is another bank side to side in the nose just there. Though there is also, a, also, is also a large propeller tucked away in the back as well to give it a little bit of an assistance, but um, I'll admit turning power in this particular configuration is not a strength of this craft. Speed is. It's pretty fast in a straight line. So yeah, there is that. I've fitted it with a um, basic detection system, which was actually a bit of a pain for this craft, I must be honest, because I couldn't really fit it into a turret mount and I couldn't really try to pack it in on flat sections in the forward and back regions because um, because of how heavily, heavily sloped it is, you know, there's no flat sections to put them into, so I had to compromise the angling slightly on the two side holes just to get some forward detection arrays in at the front of the craft. And then there's also underneath sides, top, and a single set towards the rear, but the rear is vulnerable because that's where all the propellers are. So, yeah, it's better towards the sides and fronts, really. I would suggest installing deflector shields on this thing as well, but at the moment it's got um, a 1 to 2 meter thick metal hull for defense, as, and that's about it for its endurance. It's also fitted with a big RTG power system towards the back, which is right here really big and that supplies all of its power there's some RTGs in the side mounts as well and then it's also packing a, a everything's a bit too crowded hang on a second now ah, here's a good point right. it's got this big AI system to feed all of those 90 degree detection systems so it's actually got pretty solid detection all around to guide its weapon systems but it's required a big bank of processing cars and things then inside this heavy metal sheath is ammo and fuel stores. It doesn't actually need the fuel, but um, you know, it's there. So this is a, a reinforced storage section. Then at the front, there's just where you sit basically. And you see what I mean about it being more or less blank canvas kind of thing, can't you? It's not 
it's not decked out, as I said. But that's a, a forward space. And then at the very front is attitude control. A flooded compartment full of hydrofoils and the RTG depth settings, which are currently, because this is for demonstration purposes, only set to 25 meters. But you can change the depth settings to make it run a lot deeper, if that's what you want to do with it. And that's all that's in the central compartment. The side hulls are similarly open and a bit sparse, but um, they are contained, so they could be used for buoyancy if you really want to. They've got um, connections for all of the weapon systems and things, extra RTGs, there's extra ammo storage in the sides here as well, so it gives it more points of um, ammo stores. There's also material storage at the back here as well, though it doesn't have any repair systems installed. I didn't want to mess around with it too much trying to do that. And then, as you can see, side thrusters here, detection systems, more detection systems, all hooked together. And then here's one of the weapon systems that I've mounted to kind of give you guys an idea of what you could do with this craft. So with that said, let's talk weapon systems. Um, because the detection systems can pick things up fairly accurately, but not give absolutely best detection, it's got um, two sets of missiles. It's got these really short three-pack ones, which are self-guided radar missiles. So, they've got some turning, they've got very light explosive warhead. It's basically just um, a saturation type attack. Then, in the centre of the craft, where there's more vertical space, it's got more powerful active radar detection... No, not radar. Infrared self-guided missiles. Which have more range, more fuel, and they are faster as well. So, that's its anti-surface, anti-air weaponry, for the most part. It's... Other primary weapon systems are these um, heavily angled turrets, which have been built into this. Well, there's one here in a ventral mount, and there's two either side in dorsal mounts. Heavily angled, as you can see, but they are fully articulated. They can turn around pretty easily. Let's um, let's go ahead. Yep. Weapon group two is the side missiles. Weapon group one is the central missiles. Weapon group three is the turrets, and as you can see. Turning, 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 turning. Not too shabby. Let's um, go ahead and talk about these a little bit more. The top mounted turrets. Sorry, actually, no. Not, not just the top mounted turrets. All of the turrets are railgun turrets, but they are minor railgun turrets, as in. They are not massively dependent on the boost from the rails. They've got a fair bit of ammo, primarily in a belt-fed system. Sorry, they've got belt-fed system, system, <laughs> belt system for faster firing, and then they've got um, a twin-magged standard autoloader for maintaining its pace of fire when those run dry. It's only 100mm shells, so not that powerful, but the railgun system itself ticks it over the edge, really. Takes a couple of thousand NG per shot. And with that, inaccuracy 0 0.305, so really accurate. It's got 2.81 cooldown. The railguns, they can recharge in that time as well, so 2.81 seconds for 100mm shell. And with the boost, let's go and find the shells up here that are near the front. Pass the missiles. Yep, here we go. Here we go. So it's about 2,000 for the velocity, and then the rest just goes on an accuracy buff. But, as you can see, 27 piercing, 1,910 damage, so they can knock out metal armor pretty well. And they've also got super cavitation bases, so they aren't really affected from being operated underwater too much. So they'll still do really well when the scrap is submerged, that's why they're there. And of course, there's the underside one, which is primarily going to hit um, any other underwater crafts. And that's what I've done with it. Let's drop it back in the water and send it into the depths. So yes, full forward. It's only going to go down to 25, I've said, because that's what I set it to. But um, it's got pitch control and roll control in underside mounted thrusters. So, under, thrusters. I've been working on aircraft too much. Underside mounted propellers, just to keep it all steady. And then, as you can see, this little craft bops along at 22.5 meters per second with all of its rear power. 
and the RTGs are enough to fully sustain this, plus the railguns firing, so its power system is just fine for this. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's also some turning propellers mounted inside the back of the craft here as well. So that's all going on too. So yeah, let's just turn it a little bit. As you can see, it's um, turning speed is not overall that good, but it's got the speed so it can definitely go places. And this is the Anglefish. I hope it's of interest to you guys, if you like having a look. Oh, I should quickly mention. Detection systems are 90 degree radar, 90 degree sonar, and IR 90 degrees in every single section available. So yes, that is all of that. So yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's covered everything. This is the Anglefish, now available on the Steam Workshop for anyone who's interested in messing around with it. Just take it for the hull or take it for the weapons, just to, to have a look at really, and maybe make use of in some way or other. But anyway, this has been Iron Mark III. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed having a look at this craft. And I'll catch you all some other time. I'll see you all later.